Let's get into it. And we'll go back to front and we'll start with the twin bill on Monday night. I've seen a lot of belly aching about why do we have two games on Monday? Because when one stinks, it's great to be able to, j- to just fully um, lean in to, to the good one. I mean, what, what are we talking about? What, what, is there, there it seems to me, as we just proved for the last 20 minutes, there's a lot to complain about. Why are we looking for things that are good? Extra football on Monday night yeah. instead of that game being jammed into the early window on Sunday or the third or fourth game in the late window on Sunday that you're kind of keeping half an eye on. It's nice to have uh, a little diversity on of Monday course. night. I mean, it's funny, you know, a lot of people obviously saying like, God, it would be so nice you know, if Thanksgiving could just be peaceful and, you know, like if we just didn't have to argue with family, if th- we could have Thanksgiving back. And I'm like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any assholes in my family. So it's like everyone's, everyone is nice at my Thanksgiving table. I don't have anyone in my life who thinks two games on Monday night is a war crime. I like I, I, happily, I've lived my life right. <laughs> everyone thinks that's awesome. More football, never bad. I mean, and Roberta made some good points about like, why do we need Chargers and Cardinals? Do we need that one when we have the Ravens and Bucks? I don't know. But Aunt Roberta, it's two. Don't you see? It's twice as much football. I mean, when we when we hit peak pandemic, what did the Steelers play on a Wednesday? It was, it was awesome. <laughs> It was at like 8.30 in the morning or something. <laughs> All right. Baltimore Ravens, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the home team, the Bucks are plus three and a half. The total is 48 and a half. I'm going to say that the Buccaneers win this one, 34 to 33. The Ravens are playing games that always are tracking um, over um, no matter how high they, they set that point total. And it's pretty obvious why Lamar Jackson and company are setting the world on fire when they have the ball. The other side that I keep pointing to and have for pretty much the past, what, 10 months Eddie Spaghetti is, that defense is not great in mm-hmm. Baltimore, especially in past situations. I think Mike Evans, another guy, he's on the very short list of Dave's weekly Touchdown making bets. Evans is going to get one. Pays out at a plus 115. I think Bake throws for over 257. Um, if you want to really live, not just survive, take that up to 270 and a half in pass yards for Bake. That payout is plus 125. Hench, how say you? Oh, I'm so jealous of your courage on this one. I desperately wanted to take the Bucks, but the, the Ravens have sort of beaten me into submission with this offense. I, I agree that they're going to score 33 points. That's also my total that I have for them. Uh, but I have the Bucks at 28. I, I think Bake has a huge game. Agree with everything you're saying about uh, the Ravens' defense. And, and you know, Baker Mayfield's the second-rated second rated quarterback in the NFL. Like, this is just – he's just good. Mm-hmm. And, obviously, it's a knife in the heart of, of Browns fans. Every time – Deshaun Watson is throwing a bounce pass to a wide open receiver. Baker Mayfield is somewhere throwing a touchdown pass to Mike Evans or Chris Godwin. It's it's insane that the Browns had their quarterback and now he plays for the Bucs. He is going to. And have- by the way, yeah. to your point, but I think the storyline, if I'm right that the Bucs win, or even if it's a shootout, as we're both predicting here, I think you come out of this one saying like, how come Bake is not an MVP candidate? Why is no one talking about that guy to to get the award? Well, it's already if, been if handed. You're right, and Jackson, he wins this like. one against one of the MVP candidates. He will be. Uh, the other right. thing I'll just mention real quick is um, Buck's not one dimensional. Like it doesn't seem to matter who they're handing the ball to. Mm-hmm. That guy's ripping off chunks. So um, I like the Bucks, you know, to score four touchdowns. But I think that the Ravens outscore him in a shootout, thirty three twenty eight. Spaghetti. Yeah, our brains, like, we love doing the confirmation bias thing where, we're like, oh, Baker Mayfield, like, was a top pick and left the, the the Browns, and now he's on a new team. So, like, he must not be good anymore if he's not with his original team. And we're like, yeah, like you guys just said, he is a great quarterback. And I love, like, how you kind of transition from uh, this, like, kind of annoying, like, bratty college kid and, like, you know, those commercials, I think, where I think he's pretty funny. And now he's kind of come around full circle. People are like, I kind of like the fire in Baker Mayfield, and apparently he's beloved by his teammates. And then he has that press conference where they bring up the the texas oklahoma game and he's just like oh yeah it's a bunch of texas fans who are still obsessed with me like great response by him baker mayfield and the bucks uh, i think i said this last year uh that like the bucks are the best team that nobody loves talking about 
That being said, I am taking the Ravens, uh, laying the points, and I like the over in this game too. Uh, the defense is a little shoddy in the back end, and I, you know, the, their best performance surprisingly was against the Bills' um, offense there. But uh, I, I just think the difference in this Ravens team, with obviously how good MVP Lamar Jackson is and spreading the ball around, the double tight ends they have going out now, is that Derrick Henry is still not slowing down. He's averaging an insane amount of yards per carry, and I just think when he's running like that, when he's a workhorse, it's just this offense is really, really tough to beat. So I do expect a shootout. I do like Bake and the Bucks here, but the Ravens are very, very good. Chargers are in the desert to play the cards, and the cards are catching two and a half points at the time of this recording. I think the Chargers, to what you just said, Eddie Spaghetti, about the, the Bucks. I don't think Football America has caught up yet with the story that is these Los Angeles Chargers. I think they are a sleeping giant. They are a factor in the AFC come January. I say they get this one 29-24. Quinton Johnson gets a touchdown. That is a, a three to one prop. Chargers minus half a point at the half. That pays out at plus 130. I like this Chargers team. I like the Cardinals too, just not as much. I don't find them to be nearly as complete as where Jim Harbaugh, I I mean, I can see on a piece of paper, I can see when I look at the roster, what's wrong with these Chargers, where they lack. But man, Harbaugh got there and said, beef up at the line of scrimmage so we can truck some teams. And they're just starting the mission of doing exactly that. Hench. Uh I have to abandon my Cardinals. Uh, uh, this was this was one I feel like I was I was wrong on. They opened the season. It looked like you know they were going to beat the Bills in Buffalo, and and the wheels are are coming off. They're they're just not very good. Obviously, the the Packers proved that last weekend, and the and the Chargers. So these are two teams trending in oper- opposite directions, you know. And and the Chargers are physical. I'm happy for Dobbins. I mean, what a nightmare that his career has been. And and now and now he's on a good team, committed to running the ball. He's healthy. And uh, I like the Chargers 23-20. Hey, uh, spaghetti. Yeah, I really like what the Chargers did with this draft. Th- this draft will go back and you'll think like this is the draft with Joe Alt and even Vidal and obviously Lad McConkey that kind of like built this uh, Harbaugh foundation here. Um, y- you know, I... I still think they're a little bit away and I'm kind of going on a limb here that we have not seen the Marvin Harrison jr. Like monster game yet. Uh, he's been frankly kind of underwhelming. If you're looking at the stat sheet from the Cardinals, because he's not even uh, like top three in receptions on the team. I think finally in prime time, they will get him the ball and they will win a close one here. So I am going to take the Cardinals, but I, I do think the chargers, I, I totally agree with that point. They're building a great foundation. will be a, a force uh, to reckon with uh, in years to come. All right, Battle of the Birds, Seahawks, Falcons in Hotlanta. The Falcons are laying three, of course, as I've been telling you for the last six to eight weeks. The Falcons will be your NFC number one seed. Still worth it to put something on them to do that. The total is 51. I'm riding with my Falcons here, 30 to 24. That said, DK Metcalf gets a touchdown, plus 110. Kenneth Walker, over 70 rush yards, plus 110. Drake London, Add him to the list of touchdown makers almost every week, it feels like. Now, that pays out at plus 110 as Captain Kirk gets them birds going. Hench, how say you? Uh, you know, you were you got out ahead on the Falcons even after that that awful start against the Steelers. You've been you've been beating that drum, uh, going so far as to say they're gonna be the number one seed in the NFC. I don't think they're very good. I mean, I you know, I watched them. And it it really they I don't think they're good on defense. Um, I think Cousins is obviously limited physically, even though he still throws a nice ball. That said, Gino has been throwing his decision making has been so bad. A couple of those picks against the Niners were just kind of inexplicable. Um, I do like the Seahawks to get right in a shootout, thirty to twenty seven, um, and and hopefully. Last week's B. John Robinson's two touchdowns for my fantasy team is a sign that he will actually be allowed to touch the ball in the red zone. Well, and by the way, Byron Murphy, it looks like he's tracking not to play. I like the Seahawks Mm -hmm. as a, as a top to bottom unit. They're just so banged up on defense and can't seem to get right when they do. I, I still think that they are a player on the NFC side spaghetti. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're three and three. Who would have thought they're you know tied for first place in the NFC West with the the 49ers right now? Um, that that's basically how I'm picking this game. You just said check. There's too many injuries on the Seahawks side. Plus, uh, if this game was in Seattle outside, you know, depending on the weather conditions, I easily would have taken the Seahawks in this one. This is one of the hardest games I had to pick, but we're in the dome. Hench just brought up Bijan getting involved in the red zone, which I think is huge. Finally realizing you have a stud there. Um, you know, I, I think Cousins will get better as he gets healthier as the year goes on. So I, I do think in the dome, uh, the Falcons will do enough to win this game and beat the Seahawks. Man, that Aiden Hutchinson injury, aside from being a bummer for him, and he was my defensive player of the year pick preseason, and he was tracking to get that. Man, I can't, I don't know if there's a bigger Jenga piece or he's in the top three or five. It's a good, let's do a whole episode about Jenga pieces, Eddie Spaghetti. But I, I, I mean, Jenga piece being, if you remove him, the whole thing's going to implode. I don't, that defense, I don't know what the Lions come back to earth. That's for sure. It could be a Ravens Lions Super Bowl with a final score of 123 to 121. But um, boy, that team is different without him. And so is the NFC. Andy Reid, 21 and four out of the bye. This makes this next one pretty simple. The Chiefs are heading to play the San Francisco 49ers, NFC powerhouse, of course. Niners laying one, total is 47. I'm taking the Chiefs here, 26 to 23. Kelsey gets uh, finally gets that touchdown. I'm going to stick with picking that because at some point they have to get him one. And Andy Reid, as, as he's gone off for a fortnight, probably figured out something X's and O's to get uh, number 87 the ball right. Brock Purdy over 250. Finally, the bookmakers have figured out that he is going to throw for over 237. Now they've raised it to 250. I'm still riding with that for Purdy. Hench, how say you? Well, I maybe I've been wrong about everything else I've ever said about the Chiefs. So maybe they, maybe they will go 17 and 0, but I don't think they're going to go 17 and 0. And if they're going to lose at some point, uh, this feels like a, a a very losable game, which would be no big deal to the Chiefs. Obviously, everybody's over 11 and a half wins uh, ticket is going to cash for this Chiefs team. Um, Niners completely confounding week to week, had the Seahawks blown out and then led them back into it, you know, led the Rams by double figures, lost just some very curious collapses. One thing that will not happen in this game is Christian McCaffrey will not lose a fumble on the first possession like he did in the Super Bowl, a game the Niners definitely should have won. Uh, they'll win this much less meaningful game, 27-23. Spaghetti. Yeah, I, I you know, I want to pick against the Chiefs here, but I, I do think they obviously are not going to go undefeated here, and the Niners have been pretty inconsistent. It's like win, loss, loss, win, loss. Like So they're probably due for a loss here after a win. Their offense has been super inconsistent. I mean, you know, Jawan Jennings leading them in receiving yards. Like, who would have had that in their bingo card when the whole offseason was about getting back Brandon Ayuk, and then obviously you have Debo Samuel and uh, George Kittle. And George Kittle has been fantastic. If it wasn't for, like, you know, Jordan Mason being what he has been in the absence of CMC, this team would be in a lot worse shape. Um, so I, I know I was high in the Niners early on, but I think they are going to let the Chiefs win and continue their undefeated streak in this game. So I am taking the Chiefs, like somehow getting points on the road. By the way, I said not to, you know, spoil the end of the book for you or the uh, end of Act Two or whatever, but the Chiefs are going to be your number one seed in the AFC, everybody. You knew mm -hmm. that after week two. That it was settled hash. And even more so if you're if you're a doubter of that, all they have to do now is beat the Bills and it's over. But I also think even though it's the other conference and all that, the the two looming games are the Niners and uh, and that other one and, you know, and the Bills. And, you know, if they split those even, they're going to be your number one seed. They might they really might end up chasing 17 and 0. We'll see. This is a big one for them in order to keep that alive. Next up, I mentioned the Lions and the big hit they took it. Um, with the loss of Aiden Hutchinson. Now they're playing in one of the two twin cities against the Vikings. The Vikings laying two and a half. Some respect there for the undefeated team. 42 and a half is the total. I say the Lions go in there and get it 27 to 21. Sam Darnold over 250 pass yards pays out at plus 105. Jameson Williams pretty consistent as a deep threat now. Over 50 receiving yards. That pays out at even money. He's had at least 76 yards in four of those five games. So I'm surprised that you can get that much juice attached to just 50 plus yards. Anywho, Hench, I'll say you. I'm in that garage with you. I think the Lions, uh, despite that devastating loss of Hutch, that's just so brutal. 
uh, for, for, for them, for football fans. But uh, I think the Lions' best defense is long touchdown drives on offense. And Brian Flores obviously wants to keep everything in front of the defense, which is just hard to do when Jameson Williams is on the field. You know, he blows the roof off defenses in a way that creates so much space for uh, Amon Ross St. Brown and Laporta and Gibbs. And, and I, and I do think that, that the Vikings are moving way up in class against this Lions team. I like the Lions 31, 20. See, I, I said the chiefs have an actual shot of going 17 and zero. I don't think the Vikings do spaghetti. How say you? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and this is the game. The Vikings are going to lose. The Lions are going to come here. They're going to be fired up after losing Hutch. Um, I, I just think Jared Goss played outstanding. I think the depth of the Lions is just incredible. Obviously everyone wants to see Jameer Gibbs who's electric. Um, but David Montgomery who just got an extension has been fantastic for them. And then the, the, you know, James Williams who dealt with his injuries early on adding depth that receiving core, Sam Laporta finally scoring a touchdown on that, that trickery play there um it's good to see him getting involved and they have Amon Ra who's one of the best receivers in the league there's just too much good offense there and I have to shout out our friend uh Shaq Saratiana on the sports bitches show with Megan Gailey and Rachel Bonetta she said which I think is a pretty interesting point if the Raiders go through a fire sale obviously with Tom Brady coming in getting rid of Devontae Adams and Aiden Hutchinson went down I mean, maybe make a move for Mason uh, for uh, for Max Crosby, bring in double X Detroit. I think it makes a lot of sense for a team that may, you know, kind of uh, pack it up. So I think look out for the Lions to make a move to fill them that hole. So uh, I like the Lions in this game. I do think they're going to they're going to sustain the injury. I've seen a lot of that from Ravens fans and otherwise too. go get Max Crosby. The Raiders have few really um, prized possessions. Max Crosby is one of them. I don't see the logic in dealing him away if he's not making any noise about being purged. That's what Devonte. That's why Devonte Adams isn't there. He didn't want to be there anymore. I guess it's plausible Crosby could go to management and say the same. Meantime, Beta Bowl coming up. New Age QB C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love eschewing the. Uh, uh, the requirement that we were always told you got to be a type A personality. You got to shout down teammates on the field and finger finger wag and put them in their place for not listening to the field general Stroud and love getting it done. Just one of the guys or two of the guys, I guess Texans at the pack Packers minus three total 47 and a half. I say the Texans go in there and get it by a point 24 to 20, Three, the Texans are a different team, as you saw when Joe Mixon is in there, Nico Collins, a major absence, but it feels more than offset based on what we've seen limited as though it has been so far this season when Joe Mixon's in there. What a difference he makes. Jordan Reed on the bum ankle. I, I think he's going to play and go over 55 and a half yards. Dalton Schultz getting a lot of targets from C.J. Stroud, even more so without Nico Collins. Last week, that was definitely the case. He'll go over 35 and a half receiving yards. Hench, I'll say you. This is this is my favorite game on the schedule. I mean, hmm. Jet Steelers notwithstanding, which we, we've got a separate – a whole separate episode about, but, right. uh, but, but this game uh, is a real prove it game for the Texans, obviously destroying the decimated Patriots defense, you know, no big deal last weekend, but very impressed with the balance Stroud without Nico Collins. Mixon looked fantastic. And that Texans front seven gets after it in a way that the Packers front seven doesn't. So I like the Texans to go in on the road and come out with a W, 27-26. Spaghetti. I would take the Texans here uh, in the points, and I, I also would take the over in this game, too. I think we're going to see a, a lot of offense. Totally agree with Hench. I think this game, if you had to tune into one game, it's hard to pick another game besides this one. I think it's going to be some great quarterback play in this. Uh, people were saying, why bring in Stephon Diggs when you have Tank Dell, when you have Nico Collins, New Collins, by the way, who was leading the NFL in receiving yards. Um, well, when he gets injured, now you have depth there. That's the reason why you bring a guy like Diggs in who uh, hasn't really popped off yet, but I think uh, he will have time to shine now. The difference in this game, and it's something that Jordan Love is taking after Brett Favre and not Aaron Rodgers is the amount of interceptions he throws. He has six interceptions on this season. And he's obviously missed time. Um, I just think that he's going to throw a crucial interception in this game that'll get the uh, the Texans to victory. And I, I think the Texans, I agree, the Chiefs probably the number one overall seed, but the Texans are damn good. Next up, the battle for Ohio, a sea of orange, bungles, brownies, browns at home, six and a half point underdog, I have told you more than once the hysterical backstory of the Browns and how Ohio got its other pro football team. Art Modell fired the guy 
after whom the team was named. Paul, I mean, I would love a reenactment of that. We need to get proper actors to, to you know what? You got a lot of showbiz connections, Hench. Let's make that, uh, people like biopics. That would be a great one. Just the scene of like Art Modell going to Paul Brown, like, sorry, man, you're out. Like, out of what? Like, you're out of the organization. Like, the Cleveland Browns? I'm Paul Brown. You can't fire me. Like, that's what I'm doing, man. Like, huh? And then he gets raw. So he moves to Southwestern Ohio and then says, all right, I want the uniforms to look as much like the Browns as you can possibly make them. And he's not a great guy either because as they start to succeed a little bit offensively and he's an offensive whiz, he has this guy named Bill Walsh on his coaching staff. And boy, he's a real, he, he seems to really have set the sport on its ear a little bit with some of his concepts. Can we talk to your uh, coordinator there? We'd like to hire him, your quarterback coach or whatever. We'd like to talk to him for an available spot. Or not. Nope. And never tells Bill Walsh that those calls are coming in for years. He doesn't tell him it's a, Ohio. It's the best. You wonder how uh, they have a combined zero Lombardi trophies in this one. The total is 42. I'm going to take the bungles 26 to 19. I've been telling you front runners. I'm um, taking the big favorites. Um, you've been getting bit by underdogs all season long so far. But last week, we called for the worm to start the turn. We took the Browns plus the nine and a half and one there. Also, though, took the Ravens minus six and a half, one there. Falcons and Texans also covered similar big numbers. Like I say, Bungos continue that shift to make a little bit of sense of the world and win by seven points here. Well, I think... The, the worm- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I forgot my, my fun bet of the week is... Cleveland's first possession, turnover or safety, pays out a plus 550. That's a fun one. We can all That's ride. really it. fun. That's really they fun. They turn the ball over or get sacked in the end zone. Also, there will be a touchdown under one and a half yards. Let's give it to Nick Chubb, plus 125. But uh, the bet is the there will be at least one touchdown scored from closer than a yard and a half. Hatch. Well, I think that worm definitely turned in a big way. I think road favorites were 9-0 and last week. Um, you know, the Lions were favored in Dallas, blew them out. Niners were favored in Seattle. Texans were favored in New England. So, yeah, th- those things do level out. That that early season, you know, teams favored by six were losing outright over and over again was a little insane. That had that had to level off. Um and that continues with the with the favorite winning easily in this game. Uh Bengals 30, Browns 16. You could argue the Browns have been waving the white flag all year by sending Deshaun out there. He's just terrible. But when when you ship Amari Cooper, you've now announced to the team we're not trying to win. And, you know, I don't know, like Stefanski loses his job. Deshaun Watson, maybe maybe Cleveland starts setting honey traps to try to get out from under this contract. I don't know. It's such a, an apocalyptic mess. Um, and And again, Baker, not just Baker Mayfield, but Joe Flacco, also better than Deshaun Watson. If I'll only, say this: if only Snoop Huntley had been good, then it then <laughs> Deshaun would have been the fourth best quarterback in that room. Well, what's weird is um, the the Stefanski thing. Like I always say, everybody's very courageous about what other people should do professionally in speaking out, speak truth to power to your bosses above you. Um, like, why doesn't that, if you're in that media that leans politically in that direction, why don't they speak up and tell the truth more? Cause they're making millions of dollars to not do that. Why don't, you know, it, people are beholden to their bosses and, and, and what they want. This one's weird though. Like the Stefanski not think he could get a job if he's, if he announced that like, sorry, man, ownership told me I had the plan. What was that? What else was I going to do? This is a bad look for Stefanski. He's the one who's going to have to wear that stink. I mean, Haslam's going to still be a billionaire when this is all done with. Um, and know, Barry what, can I mean, just take James, on another is, sport is, and do is, analytics for that one. This is weird for Stefanski. Is Jameis Winston like hitting the mascot in practice? Like how bad could you be <laughs> in practice to not get some reps? It's real. It, it, it's very strange, just about inexplicable, given how atrocious Watson's been. Uh, Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I have a, a lot of thoughts on this game for a game that I shouldn't have a lot of thoughts to get out of the pick. You know, it, it, I'm taking the Bengals um, laying whatever they have to in this game. They're going to win this game. Um, their offense has been great, except weirdly versus my team and Hench's team. Uh, but we'll talk about the Giants and the Patriots maybe later. 
Uh, so the Bengals, I think, are going to score some points here versus a defense that's not been as good as uh, as advertised here. On the Brown side of things, you know, I, the I was high in the Jaguars, and I hate keep bringing them back up, but they have this trend going where every quarterback who plays against them at least throws a touchdown pass and over 200 yards. The only quarterback in the league that has played them so far that has not done that is Deshaun Watson. Why is ownership? Uh, maybe I missed this. I don't know if you guys saw something that I in, in the contract. Is there a clause if he gets injured while playing? They could they're off the hook for some money i don't know what it is at this point they're not going to fool us like we know you put the guaranteed money into his pocket uh at this point you would look better if you said you know what we screwed up we had faith he was going to be texans of sean watson we've seen a a season and a half almost uh of this play he's not the same quarterback just bench him and just for guys like nick chubb who's coming back from a devastating injury and guys like miles garrett and whoever else all these veterans in this team who who wanted to be in the playoff hunt and and you're just absolutely spitting in their face so uh the browns stink i don't know how many more games the browns will win with watson at quarterback so the Bengals should win this one easily i do even wonder to your point like when does nick chubb go like yeah the knee ain't exactly right i wanted right. to get out there and give There's it no a incentive. go but you know what i tried it just like i i need some more time off i'm gonna shut it down this season and miles garrett like man that achilles man it's really been an achilles and uh so i better i better sit down too i wonder if that stuff's gonna start to happen because why would you run yourself out there uh, outside of any incentives and what you're putting on tape obviously miles garrett ain't going anywhere um, for the Browns. All right. Yeah. It's, it's all weird. Very quickly. Let's get it. You mentioned the Jags there over in London to start your Sunday, another great addition. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if they're playing them in London or if they're playing them in, uh, you know, Maine, or I don't know where, wherever you want to play the games. I don't care. Let's let's have football. When you wake up, that's nice. What, what, what are the belly aching? What's the belly aching? Everybody page. The belly aching should be from the people in the UK. These are the teams you give us, and the uniform matchup is grotesque. I only I put it in black and white because it's ugly to look at. Patriots, Jaguars, Jaguars giving five and a half, Hench. The Jaguars, they're terrible, and they're giving five and a half to your team. You have any thoughts here before we let you go here? Drake May and all that I had an MRI on Wednesday. Um, um you know, I, I think. Yeah, obviously, I was very, I was very impressed with Drake May sure. with no offensive line. Um, it, clearly, an athlete, you know, extending plays, running for first downs. You know, he had a couple drops. You know, that there were good throws. So uh, there, there, there's hope in Mudville uh, uh, with Drake May. That said, I wanted to go all the way to picking them outright, but I do think it's a huge advantage to be chilling in London for a week. Like that is that is a rough trip which, you know, often evens out and results in a bad game if both teams make the trip, but if if you've had time to get your circadian rhythms in order. So I think the Jags win, but don't cover that number, 24-23. What the hell, what the hell is Maurice Jones-Drew doing over there? Maurice has been over there for a fortnight, too. He's not even on the Jags. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what are you doing, Maurice? Anyway, I don't know. Once hey, real BSL, quick, I got to go, but real quick. Right. Um, and Spaghetti will appreciate this, and then you guys can talk about it. All right. I'm picking the Giants outright to beat the Eagles 24-23. I don't have to tell Spaghetti this. Mm. He knows. This this juggernaut commander's team, Giants would have beaten them if they had a kicker. Uh, Any kicker. They would have won that game. Giants would have beaten the Cowboys if not for the worst call of the season on the first possession of that game. And arguably, Giants could have beaten the Bengals if they had a kicker who could make a field goal. Boy, (laughs) Met life really with quite a performance against the kickers this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, shocking. But that Giants defense is for real, led by Sexy Dexy, who says he is playing in that game. The Eagles barely beat the Browns. Like the Eagles are not good. Giants win that game outright. And Tyrone Tracy more rushing yards than Saquon Barkley. <laughs> 